Well, it's just the start. It's the start of extremely lengthy legal proceedings. Today, uh, Salah Abdel Islam is going to face what we call uh, in France investigative magistrates. The charges will be read, and it will be his first opportunity to, should he take it, speak to the investigative magistrates. Now, this is all happening off camera. This is not public. Um, and. Yes, and meanwhile, he's going to be held in a high-security uh, prison in complete isolation, so no contact with other prisoners. The French justice minister has already revealed that they have special guards who are specially trained to hold dangerous people uh, will be guarding him. His detention in isolation, his lawyers could challenge that. Uh, under normal proceedings, uh, you can hold a prisoner for three months in isolation, and then it can be extended to a year except in exceptional cases. Most legal experts believe that Abdus Islam is an exceptional case. So that, you know, that case could be happening uh, meanwhile. Meanwhile, investigative magistrates are putting together a case, and they will be interviewing him extensively, establishing all the facts, uh, getting everything together before they transfer the order to France's highest criminal court, where at that stage the trial will begin, there will be witnesses, probably members, uh, families of the victims. So it's going to take years. Now, there are a number of suspected attackers now in custody. What does this mean for the investigation? Actually, Claire, the interesting thing, unlike other uh, jihadist attacks, is that we actually have in custody at least three people who are suspected of being attackers. You, you know, generally for in, uh, jihadist uh, attacks, you probably get a mastermind or an ideologue. But, uh, but in custody right now, between France and Belgium, we have, we have three young men who are suspected of failing to conduct the attack, sort of would-be attackers. And if you see the pattern of what has been revealed so far, Salah Abdeslam uh, drove the Paris uh, uh, attackers to the Stade de France, and then he came back to the heart of Paris, where he was supposed to mow down people before detonating himself. He failed to do that. He dumped his suicide uh, vest, and that was found in Saint-Denis, and then he got apprehended in Belgium. Uh, th there is another man, Mohamed Abrini, which we, who we know as the man with the white hat. He's a friend of Salah's. He was identified at the Brussels airport before the attack. He was also supposed to have detonated his bomb, but he has told... Uh, he has told his lawyers, that he did not detonate his bomb at the Brussels airport. Security experts found that after the initial explosion, and, there's, you know, and there are many reports that say, should that bomb have exploded, there would have been many more casualties. Then there is another man who was at the Malbik metro station who also didn't blow himself up. So the fact that these three men are in custody means this is very valuable for investigative judges, but it's also interesting because it shows that at least three people backed out, you know, to use another word they chickened. Now, this is not good for the terror masterminds, the terror planners, and it also ties in with what uh, Salah Abdeslam's Belgian lawyer says. You know, he called him a little jerk. He said he had the intelligence of an empty ashtray, and he belongs to a generation who live in a video game. We, you know, which goes to show that the ISIS group is, is trying to channel so many people through their pipeline. They're not necessarily hardened, and they're not necessarily exceptionally psychologically trained.